Well, the next feature is the improvement in the return to home. What this will do is it makes use of the object avoidance so that if you are in a return to home situation and the phantom starts coming back and there's a building in front of it or a tree in front of it, it doesn't just simply run into the tree as programmed in the return to home. Now it'll pause or it'll go over the tree or over the building. So this is really, really huge because when you're out flying, you're not always thinking about every single object that could get in your way. You're not always thinking about just exactly how high do I need to have the quadcopter set in order for it to get home safely. With this advancement with return to home, this could be a huge saver. All you need to do is have just one incident where the quadcopter safely pauses or safely goes over an object and it prevents an accident and you've saved a tremendous amount of money. So I see this to be another uh, very strong advancement and I'm very grateful for it. Well, the next improvement is the battery. The battery on the Phantom 4 is huge and it also provides five extra minutes of flight time. And now with the faster speed, the advancements are really significant. Now with the Phantom 4, you can go up to 44 miles per hour. Previously with the Phantom 3, we're limited to about 36 miles per hour. So you have five extra minutes and you're also flying faster. You have the potential of flying faster, which means that if need be, you also have the potential of flying faster coming back. And so it means that you'd be able to uh, more safely fly further away and be able to get back in time so that you can land safely. Now, that also means that there will be more risk taking, that people will be flying further, staying out longer. Um, so uh, these are other things to just keep in mind and weigh. But uh, for those risk takers out there, I would imagine that this is going to provide more freedom. So these new features are really cool and everything, but I know what people are really concerned about is the videography, is the picture, the picture quality. And there's been some complaints that I've heard on forums and such is that, well, they haven't really changed the camera, but that isn't completely true. There's a number of things that they have changed, uh, some specifically with the camera and some um, that affect the, the video quality itself. First is this new magnesium core. So the core is lighter, stronger, and is going to provide a, a more stable video. Um, and secondly, they moved the gimbal up. They stabilized the gimbal, adding another arm. They also moved it up into the body, which makes it more centralized into the aircraft. Again, which provides more stability for, for video. One of the issues with this jello effect, and I've talked about in, in another video, you need to have an ND filter on the Phantom on a sunny day so that the shutter speed is not up so high, which is one of the causes of the jello effect. Well, another cause of the jello effect is just having a, your quadcopter be shaky, having the camera be shaky. By introducing this magnesium core, by bringing up the gimbal into the aircraft, so it stabilizes the gimbal, so the lightness of the magnesium core and the rigidity will help to provide a more smooth video experience. Well, another factor is that they've corrected for chromatic aberrations, which means that the image itself is sharper. So instead of having these little purplish edges, those edges are sharper and cleaner. This, these are significant uh, improvements. And then the last improvement is the camera itself, where now you're able to shoot at 1080p at 120 frames per second. And this is really significant. It allows us to shoot slow motion. It also will allow the footage to, to look nicer and sharper. Whenever you're flying and shooting video, it does not make sense to me to shoot at 24 frames per second you would want to shoot at the highest frame rate possible, not the lowest frame rate possible. And so if you have the option for 60, or in this case, 120 frames per second, that's the option I'm gonna be looking for. And it'll be very interesting to do some testing to uh, see just how much of improvement it makes um, and how it, it looks in contrast to the 4K footage at 30 frames per second. 
So these are things to really look forward to when we actually get a Phantom 4 in hand and, and have a chance to go out and fly. But to me, as a videographer, it looks very, very promising that there are significant improvements with the camera. The magnesium core, improvement of the gimbal, improvement of the um, chromatic aberrations, and then also 120 frames per second at 1080p.